I don't know if you all remember, but this is our friend Charlie Wadden. Hello. And he uh, was with us many years ago for our, it wasn't Young Frankenstein, what was I Frankenstein? I Frankenstein, yeah. Which was basically Frankenstein fan fiction with gargoyles and things. Uh, but we, we came to visit him this weekend, and so uh, we went to see... We went to see a movie that was uh, made I, Frankenstein look better. Kind of, yeah. Like, I, Frankenstein had more structure and, and character development and, like, a plot. Uh, we went to see Suicide Although Squad. I think, what? I think characters may be a little bit stronger in this movie. Yeah, that's what the only thing this movie had going is it's... That and the soundtrack. Yeah. But yeah, we went to see Suicide Squad. Hey. So, hey! Um, which, you know, obviously I, I review comics, Charlie is a big comic DC guy, yes. so we thought we thought this would be an interest, interesting movie to go see. Um, it's, it's hard to talk about this film without, like, kind of going off in tangents, because it's, like, anyone who's followed the production knows that there's reshoots, and uh, most movies have those, but these, this film is so clearly edited to pieces like, it was it, a it, mess. It, it's out of there are scenes that are out of order where like in suicide squad they have the implant in their neck at one point harley gets hers deactivated the literal next scene they're in a bar and rick flags like smashes the keyboard like, you guys are all free to go and she like checks her neck worriedly and it's like you just had it deactivated like how it's it made no sense captain boomerang will leave being like, fuck you guys, I'm out, and then, uh, do you swear in these? Go it's on. fine. Okay, sorry. I've sworn, it's fine. Uh, it's like, I'm out, and then leaves, and then comes right, the next scene, they have a slow-mo shot of all of them walking as a hero group, and he just walks into the side, just beside them, it's like, this makes there, no sense. There's also a lot of, because as a team, as a team movie, this movie does a terrible job of keeping a decent balance. Because here's the thing, Guardians of the Galaxy focuses way too much on Star-Lord, Star but at least it gives each character at least a little bit. You get some... Yeah, you get a sense. every character has a arc of some Yeah, kind. Even I mean... the small one. These ones, there's... Major characters don't have arcs. There are major characters that don't... Like, some of the characters get, get introduced by Amanda Waller where they do the, like, name and, like, random stuff that, that is said about them, which, by the way, was so fast that I didn't even try reading it for most of them. But then, so then that happens after some of the characters have already gotten introduced, so they've been double introduced. And then there are two, at least two characters that aren't even introduced by Amanda in, in that whole little montage. It's just come up later. Yeah, so it so it feels completely unbalanced. It feels like an uneven movie in every sense of the word. Um, one it's, of those characters just flat out die, like he only has maybe like four minutes of screen time. It feels like I might be overshooting that. But it's, it's very quick. It's it's. Uh, and, and even like, for a character that not was clearly trying to spoiler, but basically the one character you don't see in a lot in trailers. Don't yeah. expect to see him much. Yeah, it's kind of uh, the. He has no also watch the opening. Mo they have this big montage at the beginning that sets up pretty much all the characters. One of the Suicide Squad isn't in that. And you're like, huh. Okay. And then another character who's supposed to, where you 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 think that they're supposed to be, just kind of goes like, oh yeah, and here she is. Um, so she's gonna be with us. She gets kind of a backstory, but they barely talk about yeah, her. Yeah, it's mainly just referenced in like uh, fla quick flashbacks, and there there are so many flashbacks that I'm guessing were much bigger and much bigger parts. Like there's and then there were some that were way that, too over. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of this film that feels missing. Like it's clearly been cut to pieces, had stuff added in, and the like. Studio has noted it to death. It's. Uh, Which is, but the shame of it is, is that, because both, I was whispering to Mike, because I was between these two, so I was whispering to Mike half the time, and I was whispering to Charlie half the time, and I'm like, I see these parts of this movie, there are, yeah. there are scenes that are legitimately actually really strong, and a lot of it is because of performances, because yeah. these are really good actors. Yeah, they, they were given nothing to work with, a terrible script, and like, a just and it's awful, so but they really sell it, like... Margot Robbie is great as Harley. And Will Smith is shockingly really good as Deadshot. Oh, he, he brings has a lot of depth and character. I never thought in my life I'm ever about to say the words I'm going to say. Jai Courtney was great. He was really good. Here's I have I have I have a friend who was really 
gung ho about seeing this for him as an actor because he just loved the look of him. Mm -hmm. And then I have a friend who was super into Captain Boomerang as like the dirty, just like amoral, like the dirtiest of the dirty of the Suicide Squad. She loves the old comics, but she loves him. And so for her, a lot of the movie can be forgiven because he was so like gross and yeah. weird and, and he was unapologetically that so in a way that was really fun yeah he was the i the first time i've ever seen jay courtney well it's doing a small like uh character beat he's not the like clean cut good hero he's just having fun being goofy over the top he he really sells like every scene he's in uh killer croc looks great but they, they didn't give they, him enough to do they didn't give him anything to do um the character is kind of not cool with the like s deep south, dirty south kind of. Yeah, and I couldn't even tell that because the sound quality on on his dialogue was really yeah, bad. Yeah, up the growl and so it's like, <laughs> there were times when th he says at one point, "I like her," and I couldn't tell if he said, "I like her" or "I don't like her," and I had I was like, I mean, in either way would have been fine, but I w I want to know what he said because that kind of changes the the entire meaning of what he's trying to say. Um, yeah. uh, Rick Flagg was decent, his character is pointless, and the, it's really inconsistent, like there's, he's dealing with this whole like romance thing with Enchantress, which is stupid, and there's this, they keep trying to set it up, that there's this rivalry that turns into friendship between him and Deadshot, that <laughs> you, every scene where it's, it feels like they're like, oh crap, we have to have this moment now where this is a bit where they're at this stage of the rivalry, yeah. so they have a few lines of dialogue. Like that makes no sense for these people to say these things. Yeah, um, um, I, but also amazing, Amanda Waller. I was about to say, Amanda Viola, Waller I was the best. And someone else said this during the first trailer, and and I'm going to reiterate it. I could watch an entire movie of her eating steak and talking about doing amoral things. That could have been the whole, and I think I whispered over to Charlie, I was like, the scene is going to end and I'm going to be really, really sad because I just want to see this for the whole movie. She has really, she totally captures the character. Yeah. Um, she has a part, of, the last scene of the whole movie, I think I said this movie, this horrible mess of a movie might have been worth it for the scene at the end because it's so perfect if you're a fan of uh, the JL, JLU cartoon and you're a fan of Amanda Waller in that, you will be very pleased with that particular scene. Yeah. And that's the thing, there are a lot of scenes in this movie that are are perfectly good. They're solid, and if they were in a better edited, better written, larger film, I would be super happy with it. That was, those were the scenes I was really hoping for. Yeah, it and had it, a lot of beats that I enjoyed, and yeah. it, it doesn't work as a film, and I don't like it, but I was saying to you guys as we left, I think out of the two, admittedly awful DC movies they've done so far, of Batman v Superman and, and this one, I like this one better. It is a worse film. It doesn't have the structure and confidence yeah. that Batman did, but this one I enjoyed more. I was just angry through all of uh, Batman vs Superman. This one I at least had moments I enjoyed, well, and it was more just a. Oh, really? You're doing this again? Okay. Yeah, where I'm just like, can we just move past this and maybe get to some more of the other scenes and maybe could be good? Um, mm. Yeah, and uh, I also like, besides the performances, you could tell the dynamic in another, like I said, in, in a movie where they actually had room to breathe and actually maybe grow their, like, their sort of struggle, not necessarily friendship, but like admiration for each yeah, other. Yeah, like camaraderie. Yeah, camaraderie. Um, but like they have to stop the movie, stop it, and have them have a scene in a bar, which again, in a better movie, could yeah, have actually that worked. Scene but it was, was like, cool. but there's like, there, the, there's an apocalypse going out on, yeah. going on outside. This feels very odd to just stop the movie dead in its tracks in and order to do so this. But they had no time. Great in like the trailers, for example, like characters have lines that are really funny and good in the trailers. But then when you see them in the context of the film, it feels shoehorned in, like, let's like, just put a quip here. Yeah, when Harley does her whole, like, what's that? I should kill everybody? Which, by the way, it's not super great, and, like, it has some problems because of the way that, like, in this movie, the way that the movie talks about, like, psychopaths and crazy people, it's like, mm -hmm. but the, 
I mean, all the all the Gotham based villains. There are some we could get into a huge discussion about how how mentally ill people are treated in yeah. the DC universe. So that aside, but like that already has some issues. But then, so then you take that scene that kind of works, you know, like those lines of dialogue, they kind of work because she has that good sense of timing. Well, she does. She has actually some yeah. pretty good sense of timing. But then they put like a song over it, whereas in the trailer, it actually like cuts out the song in a way that actually works for it. Um, but that's the thing. The editing in this is really messed up. There's, um, there are seriously two scenes at the beginning of the movie that just set up Deadshot and Harley, and at first I'm thinking like, oh, they're going to set up each of the characters, and then we're going to get the movie going. And instead it's just those two, and it goes to Amanda Waller. And I'm like, okay, you either show all the characters, you give each of the characters little beats, yeah. and then get the movie going, or you cut that or out, even if have like, Amanda well, walk in and have Amanda's first scene, which was actually really good, that little moment of her seeing the t-shirt, which was, I don't know if it's yeah. an exact, a direct reference to like, the 90s merchandise after the death of Superman, but it felt like it? I think so. It was okay. Just, it, was, uh, like in, it was a remembrance or something. Like yeah, I remember. Right. Yeah. But it but it felt like it felt like a very honest, like her just like smirking sort of moment. That for me felt like it felt like it would have been a perfect beginning of the movie. It would have been quiet and then you could like go right into the crazy right after it. Yeah, and it, if they had because I think what the point of those two scenes were that like Harley and Deadshot are the two main that they follow through. Yeah. The they are definitely the focus of the squad. And so it's like, okay, you're showing them, and then you go to Amanda Waller. But then Amanda's Waller scene is just... Explaining just it already. Introducing yeah. all of those characters again, where she will then go through the binder, and the first two are Deadshot and Harley. You're like, But we just saw their scenes and got introduced to them. Why are we doing this again? And then uh, you get a third introduction of Deadshot, like when he finally comes back and it's setting him up in his powers. Like, we've done this. We why are you continually doing this? Yeah, there's a lot of that, and it's and it gets me so mad because there's some scenes like um, there's some scenes that drive me crazy. So like a scene that I absolutely hated was actually Harley's first scene with the one security guard that goes nowhere, mm. but but where she's kind of being sexy, she's being sexy towards him, and clearly she's just doing it to mess with his head. But then you see a scene be before it where he's basically torturing her and then taking a selfie with her. And it just feels like, it feels, it's this weird mix of like, oh, she's being sexy and then she's being tortured in a way that I don't think was handled I think that well. what happened is all of that flashback stuff would have been, my guess is they put a lot more of Harley's story throughout it and then they're like, this is too long or we want to focus on the giant glowing portal in the sky fight for some reason, because yeah. people like those. They were like, oh, we have to cut it down, and then it goes into this weird montage with color fading, and yeah, it's... Yeah, there's just, there's some weird choices. There's some very weird stylistic choices and, there, too. And I feel like, because I, I do like her performance as Harley, I thought that she, for what she did, but I feel like this, like, it's written in a way that doesn't get... Har it, it's like, oh, we know Harley's sexy, and we know she has this tortured relationship with the Joker. And, and we saw her in the old school Harley Quinn like outfit. From yeah, the and it's like, well, we know people here. like that, so we're gonna throw that in. We know we they like her being sexy, so she's gonna lick the bars. Mm -hmm. And there wasn't a lot. It doesn't feel like there was a lot of thought put into it. And I know it's a crazy movie. Why can't you just like it for being a stupid crazy movie? It's like, well, but yeah, but even. Even stupid, funny stuff, you have to, put thought, stuff, you have to put thought into it. And I'm not sure um, that a lot... I feel like there was a lot of throwing stuff at the wall. And some of it did work, but that was... Some of it felt like, for for the writing standpoint, that it was on accident. I think, I think everything that worked in this was because of the, based on the strength of the actors. Yes. And it has uh, not the script, not the director, not the at studio. God editing, not not the editing. editing at all. Yeah. And definitely not script either, because the script that... What is there is very badly paced. And a lot of that is from the editing as well, but it's still... I think that had they not drastically fucked it all up with the editing, it would have been uh, a mediocre film, but it became a bad film by how badly it got hacked up. Yeah, yeah. There were definitely... And um, something we, we kind of vaguely talked about while we were walking back was the idea that um, there were a lot of things where 
there were actually good reveals, but because they'd already revealed it, like, three... Like, this was it. With El Diablo, mm -hmm. um, there's this part where he's not... He hasn't used his powers, and finally he uses his powers, and they're like, holy shit, you can do all that? But we see it earlier in video screens multiple times. Yeah, they show the same video clips, like, three over times. Over and over like, again. Look, at this is what this guy can do. And it's the exact same thing. And so, like, if they had cut away, if they had said, like, oh, you should have seen the video footage, and then, like, Waller holds it up to her, his cell, but you don't see it, you just, like, hear the noises or whatever, yeah, and he says, that's cool. not me. Yeah, and that's the thing. There's so much, there could have been so much tension that was built up, and instead they played their cards all too early. Yeah. Um, this movie feels like they were terrified of it, and they had no idea how the audience would react, so they were just constantly, like... This went over well in the trailer. Do that now and edit that and shoehorn it in. It it really feels like they were just yeah didn't know what they had. They didn't know what they wanted and what they got was neither of those and they tried to force it into be something else. Yeah. Was there anything you I know because we've been we've been I know going back. like I agree with so much things but um I kind of wonder what David Ayer's cut of this film was yeah. and um for me. It seems like it was already hyper, hyper over military. Like especially that first two thirds mm -hmm. was really heavy military sort of mil like sort of military movie. And I didn't I I like I don't think that really highlighted the characters as well, because the characters are sort of like kooky comic book characters and they should be like figuring out their own ways to take care of the situation. Yeah. And I think that was sort of weak. And it, the last third is where it was stronger because they're just doing their own thing and taking care of it. But um, I kind of get the feeling that maybe David Ayer, Ayers, or at least maybe even in the scripting process, that the original movie was sort of Amanda Waller sitting at a table and giving another government official a briefing of what happened at that, that dinner. Really and then it would open and close at that same dinner table because I think that was the same restaurant at the end of the movie. Yeah, it looked like yeah. it. And I, I think if you had structured it or around Amanda Waller just giving a debriefing of what the shit happened, I think that could have been a really interesting movie. And if it was what they did, I think that could have been really interesting. Yeah, well, it's, I'm, I'm very curious to see what gets released if there's going... Like, I doubt he'll really... He has said he doesn't want to do a director's cut. The one in theater is his cut, but it clearly isn't. Yeah. I'd be very interested and to if see it if is, they release then... alternate... If, or if they release deleted scenes or something, because there feels like... I wouldn't say there's a better film in there, but there's definitely... There could have been some more interesting moments, and it might not have been such a mess. It, could it probably been... wouldn't have been good, but it wouldn't have been as incoherent. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Like, this feels long, too. It's only two hours, and it felt longer than that. Yeah, because there's really no there's no flow to it. Yeah. There's a lot of stopping and starting, and you can do that in sections. Like there's there if there's a scene that's super super good, you can you can get away with that for like one moment. But this happens throughout it, where you're just like okay, or like it's a it's a really strong moment, and then they cut away, or they keep going for too long. Um, Something we should talk very briefly about because even though it was the focus of the Entire marketing and what everyone talked about. The fact that we've ignored Jared Leto's Joker is uh, almost intentional because the film ignores him too. You know, he's in he's in barely any of it. He's okay. I thought I didn't yeah. love him. I didn't hate him. He's doing something different. I. It's the it's, closest to the Nicholson Joker I think they've done. That's actually yeah. I could see that. Yeah, it's it was very, like if it's Nicholson like a Joker, bad gangster. It's a very annoying. Un, not super engaging gangster character. Yeah, like Jack Nicholson was the old fifty style gangster. This is a new modern like gangbanger style. I will like. say, and and this is something that someone else brought up, and I have to kind of agree that like you know, but with both with all the other ones, so like both um, Nicholson and with um, with Ledger. Heath Ledger, they were actually funny. They had jokes. They got mm. to have jokes. I don't remember a single joke this Joker said. Well, he, he was barely on screen enough for it to count. Like, I feel like he, well, he has said there's multiple parts cut out, which, again, I'm curious to see. Because yeah. I think it's like, obviously no... even scenes with he, where he's in, it's just the 
bare minimum you need to get that one plot point for further down the yeah. road to work. So I'm guessing that everything about it was cut out. Yeah. So I, I, I don't really want to give my final view or opinion on his ledger because we haven't s seen it. Yeah, I would say um, I might end up if I if I feel like I have str um, clearer opinions, especially about him and Harley's relationship. I feel like it will we will go on too long if I try to hash it out now. Yeah. I might have to think about it. I'm not super pleased with it. Um, it could have been done a lot better, and I I also think most of that was there because it certain scenes will lean lean one way of like oh it's a really abusive relationship, and then others will it's not there at all, and it's like. I'd or like, like oh, look. but he actually does like her, and I'm like, oh, that's framed really badly. Yeah. You're saying, that's not good. And I've heard, like, and again, like, a, a someone, um, I forget who it was, but someone had said that they had heard behind them, like, girls watching and going, oh, and I'm like, no, oh, God, no, don't, that's not what you should be taking from this movie. Yeah. That gets me so nervous. Um, but yeah, I'm going to have to think about that. It, it, I almost feel like it was too lukewarm. It was too safe. Yeah, they didn't. Which, again, I'm guessing that's something they probably did film, and then they were like, oh, that might be too edgy, that might risk, we should just cut yeah. it down and tone it because back. Because they don't understand, oh, no, you can show it being abusive as long as you frame it specifically yeah. as being a bad thing and her and something that she ends up rejecting in the movie, which is something that I thought was going to happen when I saw the trailer. I was like, oh, she's going to figure out that her, like, teammates... Or, like, they're going to be like, no, that's a bad that, idea. Spoilers, that does yeah. happen. Like, a little bit. There's, like, it kind of a light of that where she's, like, in chat, like, I'll bring back Joker for you. And, like, okay, and then stab, but you ha hurt my friends. Like, yeah. okay, that's... But then, here's, okay, but then... Here's another thing that I've heard about the Dave Ayer cut. Yeah. Is that originally that when Joker goes over and he has a helicopter mm -hmm. and he steals Harley away... He pushes Harley out, and then the copter gets shot down, and then crashes, and that's why you see Harley throw away the necklace. Then in the next scene, on top of the car, that would have been so much better. Because yeah. she I mean, you have to, to like give a the reason Joker because I'm not sure why. Like in the in the edit we saw, there's no reason for it. But Unless she's just like, oh, he's dead. I'm sad. I'm like, Whoa. yeah, but then but then it makes that's and then the ending. Spoilers, but, but it makes he doesn't sense. die. It makes more sense for her to come back then, too, to them. Yeah. yeah. Because she's, they, they are what she has. Yeah, there, there are a lot of ways. And then if they were going to keep in that last part where he's like, surprise, I'm alive. Her coming back, then they would have had to frame it as if, like, oh, God, no, that she's in a bad... Like, yeah. Because if, if, if anybody's read the story of Mad Love, the one thing about it is that it frames it really well. It's like, oh, God, this is a tragedy. This is sad. So they would have had to frame it that way. And I don't really trust these filmmakers to no. have framed it in the right they've, way. They've clearly shown that they don't <laughs> have the skill or ability to do these stories well. Like, t two films in now, both terrible, in my opinion. Yeah. And ter interestingly, both terrible for different reasons. Yeah. Like, uh, maybe they'll keep doing... Because Batman yeah. vs. Superman had a structure. It was weird and bloated and top-heavy and way too slow and no exterior shots, and all the characters are bad, but it had, like, a basic structure with some editing. This was no editing, like, terrible structure. The characters are decent, so they're all getting... So each film gets so one take, thing's right. So maybe they'll take those and put them together, and then I won't hate it. At some point, like, maybe after about another five failures, they might get one right. I'm really, really, really hoping Wonder. Wonder Woman's good, but it's not gonna be. Look, I'm... I want it to be. I bring, I I keep hope alive for stupid reasons. Until but Snyder's fired, we're not like as long as because he produced and apparently guest directed a couple scenes in this. We'll see. That was we'll, the latest. Uh, someone just said, yeah, he directed at least one scene. We'll see how it is. I I feel like Wonder Woman really was the best part of Batman vs Superman. She wasn't yeah. even a lot, but she had that spark. Like she was good when she was there. It was. Com you could have completely cut her out, and the film wouldn't have noticed. Yeah. But I enjoyed her when she was there. I'm also I also like the fact that they're going to be. I feel like maybe doing something in a historical setting yeah. will give it some. Will give it some. And it's a World War One movie, and that's exciting. So I, I'm I'm hopeful. I'm very hopeful. I like the so, cast. I'm the trailer looks good, but 
So, Two so far is very worrying. So, um, as far as let let's get some final thoughts, and and we could talk about this all yeah. day, um, but let's get some final thoughts. So, um, I feel like if you really like these characters and you haven't seen the movie yet, this I would not not suggest renting it. Um, just being aware of the editing choices, figuring out like it's a good one to watch to figure out in your head where they went wrong. Like if you're if you're one of those people who likes watching movies to see where editing choices and stuff, I think yeah. it's a good observation of like okay, here's one not to do. Here's what they could have done better in your brain. Figure out, you know. Um, and I feel like they're they're Will Smith's actually very strong in this movie. I do love the scene of him first picking up a gun again after he gets out. I thought that he he just brought a lot of energy into that part, and Amanda Waller's amazing. This is probably... I, I think that the, where the movie succeeds is honestly mostly in her, except for when she gets sidelined. That's like the one thing where I'm I, like... I did hate the scene where she's uh, at the end where she just starts shooting people. Yeah. I was like, oh, come on. Like, that's... You're now just going edgy for... That was unnecessary. It just came out of nowhere. If it was set up better, I yeah. feel like it could have worked. But it was a little like, of all. And the thing is that usually Waller doesn't have to use a gun. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the, her whole point. She is scary in way in other ways. Yeah. Um, it was okay. I didn't. It doesn't it didn't bother me as much as other things. Uh, but yeah, if you like the characters, I think it's still worth a rental. Just know that's a pretty flawed movie. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't. But I, but I understand that if. There are some things in here that, if you're a fan of these particular characters, you might be able to see past the flaws and be able to enjoy it for the little, the little spurts of good. But that's what yeah. kind of what I said about Batman vs Superman. You know, I feel like in this one, there's more stuff to shine in yeah. between all the mess. I think this is. I think this is a stronger film than Batman vs Superman. That is not a high endorsement, but I think yeah. it, it is not a good film. It is a very, very flawed movie. It has bits that are worth checking out and as you said if you want to watch something to see how bad editing can really mess up a fil film and the pacing and... It's a good like, observation study. Yeah. Like it's a good it's a good lesson and like it, again if you're into if you're into like story pacing and like that kind of stuff it's really good to kind of deconstruct in your head. It'd be fun at a drinking game too. Like oh that was a studio edit. And yeah. then after the credits, you'd be dead. Yeah. Uh, well, what did you? Thirds in, you'd be dead. Yeah. yeah. What did you? Sorry. And I know we've been. I know it's fine. You okay. guys did great. Um, thanks, thanks, Mike. I'm so um, glad you think so. What? So what did you think? Did you have any other? Um, it's worth it to see Amanda Waller. It's. Amanda was really great uh, for the most part, except for when she gets sidelined. That's the one. Yeah. But um. If you enjoyed the trailers. And you want to see it in like a cheap Tuesday or rent it? It's probably the soundtrack's worth pretty out. good. Soundtrack, except uh, for the Eminem song. That drove me. I was like, that's like the worst Eminem song. Why are you playing this song? There was a couple songs when they came on. It was like they were almost too on the nose. Like it was very obvious. Yeah. DC was like, oh, Guardians of the Galaxy was big. We should do that and play retro songs. Like Sympathy for the Devil literally plays when Amanda Waller walks in. It's like it's the most cliched on the nose oh. like it's good songs and they're good music they don't fit there maybe it, it felt like a fan edit of someone like so they took the movie and then they just edited a bunch of songs over it yeah yeah but i get that feeling too at least they were good songs yeah with guardians of the galaxy the music works because the music fits into the narrative of the story yeah it's like, actually a plot point like the tape deck and everything else is well included. can you imagine if if harley just had it had like a scene or something. Or she's like, oh, yeah, and it's like okay, just, just seriously, DC, really, really. How, so how I mean, about, between how the two, Harley has a gigantic '90s boombox boom box. and she just carries over her shoulder <laughs> the entire movie. I'd be okay with that. She has like she has speakers in her. There's back. also a lot of music in this movie. There's about like 40 songs that felt. Yeah, like. yeah, yeah, they could have cut some of that back. It's a it's for a, a movie that's so weirdly edited and paced. There's a rap ton of like musical montages yeah um i feel i'm sure there are like five different things that we haven't talked about but at the same time i feel like also that we'll ha we'll have to internalize it yeah so and final verdict for me is it's not good it's worth checking out if you're interested 
if there's a point the you're The cheapest way you can. Yeah. If you're like, this is something I want to see, or I, for completionist's sake, there are moments that make it not awful, but it's there's very few, and you have to sit through a lot of bad to get to those. Yeah, definitely. I don't know if I would ever... Probably a red box. Right I don't know yeah. if I would ever necessarily watch it all the way through again, but I would definitely take like all the clips of Amanda Waller and just watch that and have that be like, its own little movie. Because that, like, I was super... I, I was super on board every time... Every time she showed up on screen, it made me so happy. Um, I, I would love to see a Harley Katana story, because Katana is very, very little. That's why we barely got to talk about her. But I could almost see like something really fun happening between the two of them, like them, like them just going off and like picking up a bunch of other girls, having a girl gang, and just doing something like they, that. They never interacted though. Like, they, they barely. She, Harley, but Harley tried to bring up friendship. She's like. What's your perfume? The smell of that. Yeah. Which I thought was so like, I love that. I love that she was just immediately like, let's be friends with everyone and murder people. There, I I was actually on board with that. And but again, they never gave her any time. She barely she showed up like right before they got on the damn plane. Yeah. So you know, it so hits, it hits like six lines of dialogue. Yeah. In the film. But I've seen them. I've seen them interact at like press things. I'm like, they clearly have chemistry. You just have to write. Mm -hmm. You have to write stuff for her. So, um, so with that, again, there's, um, there are a thousand things that they could have done better, but I do, like we said, I think it's worth a watch, whether it's rental or matinee or Netflix, if it ever comes out on yeah. Netflix. Yeah, it, it, it's also, if you don't feel like you have to see it, you don't. There's nothing in this that... Unless you really want to see it just for novelty or curiosity, it's not a film where I'm going to be like, you haven't seen Suicide Squad? Oh, oh well, you have to see you're it. missing out. Yeah. Because not, it's not bad enough for that either. It's not at any point where it's like, oh, this is so terrible, you have to watch it for... Yeah, I can't I can't imagine watching this with like with a group of friends and like and like and enjoying it in like... A, it reminded me a lot of almost Elektra. Like I it, never it, even yeah I never even got to see that movie. Electra's worse, but it has that same type of. There's no stakes. The the villain's just a type of mystical monster that has endless CGI henchmen that just crumble away after they die. Yeah, that, that's no, the other thing because there was no, there was so little stakes in this movie yeah. because there weren't any and these weren't supposed to be. I mean I traditionally these are the guys that will just flat out kill people you bring them in not because necessarily they're the mo they're the strongest or everything but they're the ones that specifically will do all the things that no one else will do yeah and like actually killing people but when you have a pg-13 movie you can't you can't be showing all that murder and death yeah which is it like i said this was there was just so many flaws and i it maybe was never going to be a good movie but it could have been better than this, and I think that they, that it kind of nosedived. Yeah. So, um, so with that, before we go, uh, Charlie, you, right. you have uh, uh, a little announcement. A bit of an announcement. A uh, feature film that I directed, Deadline. You can see the poster behind Mike. <gasps> is having its world premiere at the Teal Indie Film Festival, September eighth at nine fifteen at the Carlton Cinema in Toronto. If uh, I'm sure there'll be links in that posted to this, but we can do that, right? Yes. All right. It's we'll a feature film that I've worked on for ten years, if you count from the first draft of the script. We shot it four years ago. It uh, took a long time post production editing. It is finally done, and it's having its it's my first feature that's ever having a premiere in a theater or a festival. It's pretty exciting. So, cool. if you're in the Toronto or GTA area during uh, around September eighth, come on out. Yay! Go Charlie. So, um, thank you for having us. Thank you for being on oh, on the for video asking. again. I, I love uh, ranting about DC movies. And definitely go to his premiere if you're going to be in Toronto. Uh, and with that, so Katie, Charlie, Mike, JustPlainSomething.com, and we'll see you later. Bye, everybody. Bye. See you.